Interesting. So you're bringing together massive city problems, data, and yes. innovative solutions. So give us give us some examples of how this actually makes life better for the people who live in Palo Alto, say. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll use a sip. I'll use two examples. One relatively simple. One more complex. Uh, you know, when when you enter an urban environment and when you come into Palo Alto and there's a lot of traffic in the downtown areas, the number, the general number that's thrown around is about, is that 40% of um, the congestion uh, are people looking for parking spaces, 40%. Um, and this is pretty consistent worldwide. This is not an American or California phenomenon. This is a global phenomenon. So if we can find ways for people to identify available parking spaces so cars can go directly to them, I think we can, uh, we can extrapolate that potentially you can reduce the amount of overall urban center congestion. Um, so smart city approach would say, well, how do you make available this knowledge that a parking space is available? Well, you might have a sensor. And yes, in, in Palo Alto, we are experimenting with sensors in parking spaces. And once uh, the sensor knows whether a parking space, whether a car is in that space or not, that information then uh, transmits to uh, some cloud resource, which in turn is consumed by an app, and then the app will inform the driver. So that's one sort of practical. I think everybody can relate to this one. Um, but let's continue the thought around transportation, because it happens to be definitely among uh, city governments among the top five big challenges. Um, in the city of Palo Alto, we've recently gone from analog traffic signals to um, uh, internet protocol-based uh, traffic signals. So traffic signals become nodes on a network. They become potentially more intelligent. We can control them through software. Now, there's lots of advantages. So people get frustrated by traffic signals, maybe a light, uh, a very popular intersection. The light is too long at red. Um, perhaps uh, it's it's too brief and it could be dangerous. So we could do a few things now with this new network. For one, we can have it dynamic. And we can have dynamic across the entire city. So it changes based on conditions. Um, so that's one. Now, that's not entirely innovative. That, that's happened for a while, even on the analog systems. But we can have a granular level of managing those signals. The next thing we can do, we can start to have a series of sensors on our traffic signals that can do things like count traffic, you know, count different types of traffic. Uh, is the traffic bicycles, pedestrians, cars, trucks? And the sensors can tell us what direction are these different entities going. Um, once we are able to collect that information in real time, 24 hours a day, we can start to inform decision makers about how we plan our, our infrastructure how we can redesign dangerous intersections or make them more efficient. Um, and so we're working on that. And so that's, that's smart transportation. That's having the infrastructure respond to human and human needs in a much more organic and intelligent way.